If you've ever seen an astronaut launch to space, whether in footage from the 1960s or in a recent SpaceX launch, you might have noticed they all have one thing in common really cool spacesuits. So today on Space Chat, I will be talking all about spacesuits. If you haven't been here before, Space Chat is the weekly show where I take a deeper look at Earth, the universe, and beyond. So let's talk spacesuits. Spacesuits are one of the most fundamental and important pieces of technology for human spaceflight. In fact, whether it's in Earth's orbit, on the moon, or one day on Mars, spacesuits are absolutely critical for astronaut safety and performance. They're often referred to as the world's smallest spacecraft because each spacesuit really functions as its own spacecraft, providing air, providing all kinds of necessary things to keep astronauts safe, healthy, and alive out in the vacuum of space. Now, the first spacesuits at NASA were actually made by seamstresses at Playtex. That's right, the same company that we know from making bras and other women's undergarments was actually the same company contracted by NASA to put together designs for the first spacesuits. In fact, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in a spacesuit designed and made by seamstresses at Playtex. Now, NASA spacesuits were custom fit for the early years at NASA. Each astronaut got their own suit to their dimensions, but after Apollo, when they were looking towards the shuttle program, NASA realized that they would have a lot more astronauts, and to custom fit for every single one would be astronomically expensive, pun intended. So they came up with a solution. Essentially, they figured out a way to have different sizes for different components of a spacesuit. For example, you might have a small sized arm piece and a medium sized torso and a large sized leg piece. And astronauts could then put the different sized different components together for a pseudo custom fit. Uh, and of course, astronauts would test in these different sizes to make sure they had the right fit on the ground. Um, however, this approach did not account for the body size and shape differences between men and women which has caused some problems over the years. In 2019, we all kind of probably saw those headlines about the postponement of what was going to be the first all-woman spacewalk. Uh, now, there was some misinformation surrounding this. It was not that NASA didn't have the suits. Um, each piece, the torsos, the legs, the arms, each piece takes hours to prep before a spacewalk. And what happened was, so the two astronauts that were set to walk were Christina Cook and uh, Anne McLean. And Anne McLean tested on Earth in both medium and large sized torsos. However, in space, because things change and move once you're in microgravity, the medium fit better. And this is really important because spacesuits that are too large and fit incorrectly can actually pose a very, very serious safety issue for the astronauts. So they obviously didn't want to compromise Anne's safety, um, and it would have taken too much time to prep another torso and have all that ready for the spacewalk they had already planned. So they shifted the schedule around, and the first all-woman spacewalk took place later on with Christina Cook and Jessica Meir, another NASA astronaut. Um, but that just goes to show you kind of how over the years there have been kind of these small occasional issues with these kind of people have called them Mr. Potato Head astronaut suits because of all the different pieces and putting them together. Uh, and really since the 70s, since they were created, these NASA suits have not changed much at all. But that's why NASA is working on the new XEMU suit, uh, Extravehicular Mobility Unit. That's the fancy term for spacesuit, so XEMU spacesuit. That's for the Artemis generation. Or the astronauts that will go to the moon as part of NASA's Artemis program, or potentially even one day to Mars. So it's been quite a long time since NASA's had a suit upgrade for budgetary reasons, but everyone's really excited about the new suits. They look really cool too, uh, so it's really exciting. Um, they promise that the astronauts will have a better fit and that they will have more mobility and more comfort with these suits, which, I mean, it's been so long, 
it's, I'm sure they're going to be really incredible. Now, NASA is not the only one making spacesuits. Uh, SpaceX made quite a splash when they debuted their spacesuits, which were first worn to space by NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley with SpaceX's Demo 2 mission to the space station. These black and white tuxedo suits are pretty snazzy looking really cool and they really grabbed everyone's attention. Um, now, these are not the same suits that an astronaut would wear on a spacewalk, out in space, on the moon. These are just flight, for flight suits, you know, for, for being in the capsule, for getting from Earth to the space station. They're not for stepping out into the vacuum of space. Um, but that does not mean that they do not still serve an extremely important purpose. Uh, they have gloves that work with SpaceX's Crew Dragon's touchscreens. Uh, they're able to be plugged into seat cables that can deliver oxygen and cool air, and they have a lot of other really interesting features that allow the astronauts to be as safe, comfortable, and have as much mobility as possible, which is really important. Uh, for years, astronauts have talked about how difficult it is to do things with spacesuit gloves on. It's not easy. Uh, and there are a lot of other challenges that come with wearing a spacesuit. It does not look easy to even walk in one, let alone make repairs to the space station in the vacuum of space. So it's really exciting to start seeing these next steps and the next generation of spacesuits evolve. So that's just a little bit of a history, a little bit of a rundown of spacesuits. Let's get into your questions. All right, Jack on Facebook asks, whose spacesuit is the most reliable? That's a really interesting question. So I really can't say whose spacesuit is the most reliable. Uh, right now, the only spacesuits being worn by NASA astronauts or on these SpaceX missions out into the vacuum of space are NASA's spacesuits. Um, so when, when we're talking about these spacesuits in particular, I mean, SpaceX's is really cool, but it's designed for a different purpose, right? Spacesuits for flight are gonna be different from spacesuits for spacewalking, different from moonwalking spacesuits. They all serve different purposes. So I, I don't think we can really compare and contrast them in that way, but really interesting question. Michael on YouTube asks, if water could keep radiation from penetrating spacecraft, are there any ideas out there for a water-lined suit to protect our astronauts? Interesting. So there are lots of developing ideas about wearable technology and different ways to better protect astronauts from radiation. Currently, during spacewalks, they really just try to keep astronauts out for as little time as possible and plan them during kind of low solar activity periods of time to minimize radiation, but the spacesuits don't provide a ton of protection against this radiation. Uh, however, like I mentioned, there are developing technologies. I don't know about water in a suit. Um, there's already water in the suits in a small capacity for cooling, um, for temperature control and other purposes, but they have posed an issue. Uh, in fact, at one point in time, Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano almost drowned in space, in his spacesuit, because of a leak of water into his helmet. It was very scary. Thankfully, he survived. Um, but as we add things and change things with spacesuits, we have to remember how dangerous what these astronauts are doing really is. So I think it's an interesting idea. I'm curious how technology will develop to better protect them from radiation. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious to see how that plays out. Ion on YouTube asks, how many spacesuits are on the space station for use? Um, usually about four, um, though only two astronauts spacewalk at a time. But like I mentioned, the spacesuits come in pieces, torsos, arms, legs, all different sizes, um, but typically about four full spacesuits. Um, and it depends, you know, there's not always the same number of people on the space station, and oftentimes they'll bring them back for repair and then bring another one up, so there might be a period of time where there's less, typically about four. Uh, Glenna on Twitter asks, if a leak in the spacesuit happened, would the astronaut survive? So there are lots of different types of leaks that could happen. Um, you know, we've all seen the sci-fi where there's a hole in the sleeve and vacuum of space, oh my gosh, where's my oxygen going, um, etc. But like I mentioned, other leaks can happen. 
Luca Parmitano, water leaked into his helmet and he nearly drowned. Uh, thankfully, he did survive, um, but any type of leak, any type of abnormal function when it comes to a spacesuit is extremely and critically dangerous. Uh, now, astronauts on spacewalks don't typically get that far from the space station and they are heavily and constantly monitored uh, back on Earth and also by their fellow astronauts inside the space station. So I would hope that if there was some type of issue like that, he would be able to get them safely back inside. Like what happened with Luca? Alright, Sarah on Facebook asks, how long can someone wear a NASA suit in space before their oxygen is depleted? Interesting question. So each NASA suit, if we're just talking about NASA suits, has two oxygen tanks with about 800 liters of oxygen. And that can last over 16 hours in space. Uh, and, and that is much, much longer, about twice as long at least um, as most spacewalks. So they typically go out with much more oxygen than they could ever use in a single spacewalk, which is great um, just to have that backup just in case. Saul asks over email, how do these contracted seamstresses know how to make an airtight suit? Well, they're really good at their job, Saul. Uh, <laughs> the seamstresses at Playtex, it might seem like an odd fit, um, but they were working with really innovative materials. They were developing new materials. They were developing new types of materials and suit technology, and it really ended up being a great partnership. And over the years, seamstresses, um, or as we could call them spacesuit engineers, there's lots of different words out there, uh, have developed and engineered all different types of materials and techniques to not just develop and put together spacesuits, but for all types of things at NASA. In fact, NASA's space shuttle was lined with these thermal blankets, these interwoven complex nylon thick blankets that literally helped to protect the space shuttles. Um, and those were made by these people at NASA, which is really, really interesting. And yes, sometimes they're contracted. Um, NASA has worked with ILC Dover, like I mentioned, Playtex. Um, and, and of course they have in-house workers as well. And they're just, a, you know, really great qualified people. NASA only works with the best. Uh, Rich on Facebook asks, how much does a NASA suit cost to make? A lot, uh, usually about $12 million. Um, and that factors in material science, research, development, testing, labor time, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and that's really the main reason why they haven't had a new suit in so long. Um, even the spacesuits that have been lost in tragic accidents throughout shuttle, for instance, those spacesuits are just lost. Um, it, you know, they are really expensive and expensive to not just replace, but also develop new versions of. So it's really exciting that we're getting this XEMU spacesuit for this new generation of astronauts. Ooh, Fatima on YouTube asks, they say, I've got a question. Why are spacesuits always white? Uh, it seems like, you know, why not just make them any color? Make them pink, make them green, make it fun. Um, but they're actually white for a really important reason. Uh, the white reflects a lot of the incident radiation or sunlight that falls on them while they're out on a spacewalk. Uh, and that really just helps with temperature control. It can get really hot and really cold during a spacewalk, depending on how they're facing the sun, you know, where they are at that point in time. So that just helps with temperature control. Also, and this is not the official reason, but I would assume that it also makes them easier to spot against space, right? Um, if they matched space, it would probably be a lot harder to see them, uh, especially because it's already pretty tricky to track astronauts during a spacewalk. Um, there's, you know, it's get, it gets pretty busy in space. All right, Gary on Twitter asks, how much have spacesuits changed since the Apollo era? It seems like the answer should be quite a bit, but not really all that much. Uh, from the origins of human space flight up through Apollo, spacesuits were custom fit, they were changing, there were lots of weird out there spacesuit designs, but after Apollo through shuttle, they kind of stayed the same. Uh, these different pieces put together different sizes, right? Uh, so they haven't changed all that much since the 70s, but they're currently in the process of changing with the Artemis program with these new human space flight initiatives. All right, and Beck on Facebook asks, what are those spacesuit, what are those SpaceX spacesuits even made out of? 
Uh, yeah, they look really futuristic and of course, no surprise, they're made out of some futuristic material as well. Um, it's actually very similar to Kevlar and it is fire retardant. Um, so that's the information I have about that. Thank you all for your questions today. Of, as always, you asked some really great ones. But before I go, I would like to let you all know what's new in space. So recently, Blue Origin launched its Mannequin Skywalker Mannequin uh, into space on New Shepard as part of a test flight. Blue Origin employees actually strapped into the vehicle uh, as part of a pre-flight test going through the astronaut procedures, but they did not fly. Just Mannequin Skywalker. Also recently, scientists found that the Earth lost almost all of its oxygen 2.3 billion years ago. Also, NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft is getting ready to say goodbye to the asteroid Bennu, and scientists think that lightning strikes could have helped life to originate here on Earth. So this has been Space Chat. Join me again next Friday and every Friday. And as always, stay tuned right here at space.com. And if you have a question or you have an idea for a future episode, let us know. Reach out over Facebook, any social media, email. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be talking about the space station. I'll be talking about supermoons. So if you have a question, let me know. All right, everyone, have a great weekend.